that. So we can go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Warmby. I'm a program officer at VentureWell. Uh, more on who VentureWell is and the work that we do and how we can support you a little bit later on. Um, VentureWell though is a power connector in the American Made Challenges Network. We have been supporting solar price teams since round six. So we've been doing this for a little while and I'm happy to, to talk to you about my experience and how we can support you as you apply for Solar Prize, but also progress throughout the competition. Uh, today, we're gonna cover a lot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, I want to just start by saying that if you haven't already, I encourage you to go to the Solar Prize Round 8 Hero X webpage. Uh, there you will find a recording of last week's um, info session hosted by NREL. That's a good video to view to get a sense of the um, entire prize and kind of the ins and outs of applying for and participating in the program. Today we're going to dig into evaluation criteria and some of the, you know, uh, lesser known information about this prize, um, kind of content that's covered in the appendix and that you may be paying a little bit less attention to. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can you see that? Looks good. All right, great. Thank you for the thumbs up, Greg. I appreciate that. All right. So welcome. Um, again, this presentation is going to give you a better sense of how we can support you, how VentureWell can support you as a power connector. I'm going to provide a brief intro for Solar Prize for those of you who may have not attended yesterday, last week's uh, info session with NREL. Um, if you didn't attend that session, again, you can view it anytime on the, the HeroX page. Uh, we're also going to cover um, the key evaluation factors and the criteria that reviewers will be evaluating each application on. And then we're going to go into policies that could affect your chances for success. Uh, so these policy factors will be considered in addition to the reviewer feedback. All right. But first, a little bit about VentureWell. So to, to set the stage, I want to make sure that you all understand you know, our mission and the type of support that we can provide teams. Uh, VentureWell has been around for about 30 years at this point, cultivating a pipeline of inventors, innovators, and entrepreneurs like yourself who are driven to solve the world's biggest challenges and to create a lasting impact. Uh, the program that I run is the E-Team program. It's an accelerator program where we support teams that uh, have novel science and tech innovation, are working in typically a university lab space, but, but any lab space, and are starting to think about a plan for commercialization and entering the larger market. Uh, we're supporting teams no matter their stage from ideation and market discovery through entering the market and connecting with investors. And we have this pipeline of programs and resources to support you um, as you progress as an innovator, as an entrepreneur. Um, so starting with that stage zero where you're, you're you know, compiling research and starting to define your invention all the way through scaling and entering the market. Um, so the, this solar price is just a portion of the work that we do. Um, and what we've seen is with other previous solar price teams is that they enter our funnel through solar price and then progress into these some of these other programs um, that we offer as an organization. All right, so let's dig into to solar prize. Solar prize round eight, uh, an American made challenge prize is designed to accelerate and sustain American solar innovation through a series of contests, leveraging a diverse and powerful support network of national labs, energy incubators, and other resources across the U.S. Uh, through this unique multi-tiered structure, Solar Prize rewards teams for work that they've already done, 
by getting money out the door as quickly as possible and connecting them with the network in order to propel them forward. So not only are participants in the prize receiving money, but I would say equally valuable, if not more, is a network of people that you have the opportunity to connect with. Uh, so this slide, which you might be familiar with from last week, summarizes at a high level the, the tiers of the contest, the prizes that are available to teams, and what you can expect as you progress throughout it. So in total, there's $3 million available in cash prizes, along with $900,000 of support available in vouchers. Uh, a voucher is basically a, an amount of money. Uh, it differs in each contest period. Um, in the set contest period, it's a $90,000 $90, voucher for work that you can do in partnership with a national lab. Um, and that is in addition to the cash prize that you receive through uh, as a, a prize winner. Um, there's also an optional $200,000 available in the JEDI contest. We're going to dig into the JEDI contest a little bit later. Um, as well as money that is available for um, connectors who um, can support you throughout the competition. Uh, and if you want more information about this, again, I want to refer you back to the, the NREL info session. Um, each uh, tier of this contest has a different focus and goal that uh, teams will be pro progressing through. So in Ready, which we're going to spend most of our time talking about today, you are making your plan and showing off your idea. Um, you are demonstrating that you have a novel, innovative solar idea. You have a team that you've compiled to, to work on this idea, to bring it to life. And you have a plan for what the next year can look like if you are selected as a Ready Contest winner. Um, so not only are you talking about work that you've done so far, but a major goal of the, the Ready Contest is proving that you are a team that has the capacity to progress throughout the prize structure into the set and go contest periods. So in the set period, you are taking that plan that you showcased during Ready and designing a proof of concept that you can show off and then test during the go contest period. During the go contest period, teams are developing that prototype, identifying a pilot partner and showcasing a plan for commercialization that will take the team uh, post contest period. So really, again, the goal of this program is to demonstrate your novel innovative idea and to progress it uh, in an accelerated way uh, so that you can make the most out of this participation in this program and progress faster than you could without it. All right, as promised, the JEDI program. So JEDI stands for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. It is a prize that you can participate in at various stages of the uh, contest period. Uh, so in ready up to um, JEDI winners are awarded uh, a prize of up to $25,000. That would be split amongst the JEDI com competitors. So there's a $100,000 pot total. The maximum amount that you can win is $25,000. Uh, and then there's $50,000 to be split uh, in subsequent rounds of the solar prize. All right. And I'm gonna, I have a little bit more on JEDI in a second, but I did wanna spend a little extra time discussing Red Eye Ready as it is the stage of the competition for which you're currently applying. So again, the goal of this program is to transform your problem from a concept, an idea, um, to a plan for building a future proof of concept. So that's that, that set contest period goal. So over the course of the ready contest period and in your application, we want to see that you are developing that problem solution fit, um, connecting those two things and really addressing how your solution 
solves a, a big real world problem that the solar industry is facing. Not only that, we wanna see that you have the team that is capable of bringing this um, product to the market, that you're the best person to solve this problem and you have the skills necessary to do so. And finally, this is the start of engaging the American Made Challenge Network. We wanna see that you are already making the most out of this opportunity. As I mentioned previously, I think the greatest thing most teams receive out of participation in Solar Prize is the opportunity to engage um, the Greater American Made Challenge Network. Um, we wanna see that you are maximizing this opportunity and making connections that will strengthen your application package. All right, uh, and back to JEDI, digging a little bit deeper into uh, the criteria that you would be judged on. Again, this is optional. Uh, the JEDI contest encourages Solar Prize competitors to consider and incorporate JEDI principles into their innovation. So JEDI, again, stands for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we recognize that there are numerous barriers to accelerating the growth of solar in underserved communities across the U.S., uh, including some that can be overcome through software and business model innovations like yours. Uh, so we want to you know, highlight how your innovation can advance solar and create solutions to address those barriers to adoption and deployment in underserved communities. Um, so you're gonna wanna demonstrate these, these JEDI goals through your application. Um, it's a, an additional add-on to the ready application as a whole. And you know, to this side, you wanna demonstrate that not only is your innovation novel and innovative, but it is a innovative and compelling solution specifically for these underserved communities. This is another opportunity to really utilize the American Made Challenge Network to address JEDI goals. Um, there's There are many opportunities for partnerships so that you can really highlight how your innovation adjust, um, addresses the JEDI goals. Um, Similar to the Ready Contest in general, you know, we want to see how your team is uniquely capable of addressing these issues. And a great way to do that is quantifying your critical JEDI problem and, you know, assessing how your solution addresses that problem and you have a unique understanding of the landscape that you exist within. And uh, new this year during the Ready Contest is a Jedi-specific power connector called InPower. And I think in color, um, Colin can provide a link. My colleague Colin, who's also on the call, can provide a link to their website and more information about getting in contact with them because they are uniquely capable of supporting teams uh, in their Jedi application. All right, let's talk about eligibility requirements. Uh, so this is something that is a key requirement of all solar prize applications. And I want to note that these are not all the key requirements and eligibility criteria, but the ones that I get the most questions on. Um, and if you have questions regarding other key requirements and eligibility criteria, I'd be happy to address those at the end of our time together. I think we should have plenty of time for a Q&A uh, at the end of the session. Uh, but first, I wanted to dig into these three things. One, um, individuals, teams of individuals, et cetera, must have at least one person, a single competitor on their team that is a U.S. citizen. Um, this can be a citizen, a permanent resident, or um, you know, your business is incorporated in the U.S. This is a requirement of all stages of the competition, but especially as you progress through the competition, for example, in the set contest period, you must be incorporated in the U.S. Um, second, SolarPrize requires that all entities applying 
for the prize must be private entities. They cannot be nonprofits. You need to be um, a for-profit uh, entity. And finally, uh, academic institutions are, be, are available, are eligible to participate in this contest as well. Um, a few additional notes um, in regards to JEDI. Uh, so teams that have applied to JEDI uh, and are eligible to win must also be JEDI or ready contest winners. Um, so to clarify, if you want to win Jedi, Je Jedi, you also have to be a ready contest winner. Same for set. If you win set, you also um, are then eligible to be a Jedi contest winner. All right. So now that I've introduced the prize and provided a little information about its structure, I wanted to spend some time digging into that appendix that I mentioned at the top of the call. So uh, these are some of the areas that I most often receive questions about, and I wanted to make sure that we proactively cover this content. So let's dig into these program policy factors. Um, so while the scores of the expert reviewers who review each solar prize application are carefully considered when evaluating your team, uh, it's the, the role of the prize administrator, so NREL in this case, to maximize the impact of the funds that are available in this contest. So some of these factors that are outside of the um, score and scope of the review may be considered to accomplish this goal. So this is a list of such factors. Um, so these are things that you would want to give additional consideration when strengthening your application. So I would say some of the best advice I can give you is spend a lot of time in the rule book, get intimately familiar with the um, kind of, let's see, I can, I can give you a specific page too, because I think that would be helpful. Um, as you apply for the, the ready contest period, you're in the rule book, that is gonna be page 23. Um, what, what to submit in the evaluation criteria is highlighted in each section and each, in each tier of the contest period. Uh, follow that to the letter. They tell you exactly what they want and they are going to set you up for success if you follow that. These things here that I'm highlighting are additional ways that you can strengthen your application outside of that. So you wanna be thinking about the impact that you can make in the solar uh, market, geographically as well as economically. Um, we also want to assure, um, and you can strengthen your application by doing this, that your solar innovation is compatible with Department of Energy goals and um, wouldn't be duplicating any other funds that you might have been awarded to progress your innovation. We're gonna dig into that specifically in a second because this is a newer rule and another one that provides a lot of question. Um, we also wanna see that your um, project is novel, it's innovative. We're not seeing it uh, elsewhere and it's promoting diversity in the scope of the applications or, or ideas that are being funded. Uh, we, NREL wants to also see that you are accelerating commercialization, that you have a plan to commercialize, it is a strong one, and that participation in this program is going to help you overcome barriers and accelerate your commercialization. Uh, economic benefits, so increasing employment and manufacturing, how is this a, um, benefiting a local economy, national economy, this could also be a good place to incorporate those JEDI goals. Um, that, there is, that your innovation will also be transformational in advancing technology, financial, and workforce advancements. Um, how is your tech different from others on the market in doing this? Um, they would love to see synergy with existing DOE projects, 
So any work that you can point to that your project might be able to partner with, that is another opportunity to um, kind of expand on in your application. Um, so expanding funding reach. So the, the DOE is looking to pool in new competitors to fund new projects and previously unsupported uh, recipients. So if you're someone that's never received funding from the Department of Energy before, that could be a mark in your favor also. Um, this prize is trying to promote diversity and inclusion. So representing underrepresented groups is important and something that would be good to see in your application. Again, expanding the market. And if you can, coordinate with nonprofits through partnerships. This is another JEDI opportunity and um, something that our JEDI Power Connector would be able to support you in. All right, so back to that duplicative funding. Uh, the prize administrators, NREL, want to ensure that the work of competitors is unique to Solar Prize and that other funding from, for example, the Solar, Solar Energy Technologies Office or the DOE must be disclosed. So in the um, rule book that I mentioned, there is a duplicative funding notice. So if you have already secured other federal awards that are currently active or potentially pending, we want to ensure that the work that you're doing uh, in Solar Prize wouldn't overlap with that previously secured funding. So the work that you're doing to Solar Prize is unique to this prize submission and the activities that you outline in your application. So if you already have, for example, an SBIR award, uh, you need to ensure that the work that you're proposing to be awarded for in Solar Prize is unique to, to this prize. Um, so specifically, you can uh, there are a few rules that you must um, align with. You can't use fed federal funds to cover direct costs associated with solar prize activity. They may be used for indirect costs, um, but only in accordance with applicable cost principles. And if, if you have questions about this or about other awards, um, I'd be happy to dig, dig into that further uh, once I make my way through this presentation. And I did want to provide, you know, a quick slide showing what success has looked like in the past for Solar Prize. So the team that uh, is being featured on this deck is a winner from a previous round. So I will play that real quick. We won the American Made Solar Prize round six uh, and half a million dollars and Jedi. Oh my God. Yes. Very overwhelming. It feels great and very humbling. So there's a lot of learnings that we have now that we did not have back then that we can now use to also support and educate others too. Mutual is just very much dedicated to clean energy access. And we've put in so much work into finding really good partners to work with with our local communities. And it's important to know that our outreach that we have in trying to work with communities is recognized. And you know, we, we hope that it helps us accelerate having some more growth and expanding more of the clean energy access and storage. So I wanted to share this video because Regal is a team venture well supported in Solar Prize Round 7. Uh, we coached them throughout the entire contest. They had the opportunity to connect with our network. They went on to participate in other venture well supported programs, such as our Aspire program, where which is our investment readiness program. Um, so I think they really exemplify, you know, what you can get out of Solar Prize if you take advantage of all the opportunities presented to you and what success looks like. Um, and I did, my next slide is on program dates and resources. So first, uh, and I will return to Regal. Um, first, 
go over some important dates. Applications are already open, so you can start working on your Solar Prize Round 8 application now. I would encourage you to do so. It is a rather extensive application, um, and starting early will allow you to really make the most out of the opportunities that are available to competitors. Um, one way to do that is through participating in info sessions. This is the first of three info sessions that VentureWell will be hosting. Um, on August 6th, we'll be meeting again to talk about other ways that we as an organization can support you as a power connector, as well as defining what a connector is and how they can support you as well, because there are tons of connectors that are in the American Made Challenge Network that are compensated for supporting teams like yourself. And so you definitely want to make the take advantage of that opportunity to get free for you support from connectors. And then finally, in September, we're going to have an info session specifically about the Jedi contest. Um, and that kind of leads us into the closing of the applications on September 26th at five o'clock Eastern time. Um, again, I encourage you don't wait until the last minute. I know it's easy to do. I often do it myself, but start working now on um, your application and connecting with folks like me, power connectors and connectors who can support you in putting that all together. All right. Um, I wanted to kind of end my presentation with a few tips and tricks um, and identify a few opportunities for you to maximize your chances of being successful as a solar prize competitor. One, you're going to want to clearly demonstrate, you know, what is novel about your innovation and what the commercial potential is. Develop all the, like, dig into the different markets that you intend to enter and how Participation in Solar Prize can help you maximize that. Uh, highlight your strong and diverse team. Make sure it's clear to reviewers why you are the best people to be solving the problem that you identified and how your team is going to advance this innovation. Um, you're going to want to show progress that you've already made in advancing your innovation, but also start to put together that plan for the future. We talked specifically about the ready contest period today, but a big part of the of putting together a successful application is highlighting the work that you're going to do in future contest periods. So it's not just about ready, it's about demonstrating a clear plan for the set and go contest periods as well. So I would encourage you to continue reading in that rule book Make sure you know what the goals of future contest periods are and incorporate them into your ready application. Um, you're gonna wanna demonstrate that, that your innovation is in line with the program goals and prioritize that we discussed. Cover JEDI principles in your approach. And I, I encourage you to consider applying for the JEDI contest period. Um, you know, we mentioned regional previously, they were ready they were um, a round seven grand prize winner, but they also were a Jedi winner as well. And they were Jedi winners of each phase of the competition. Um, and that leads me, I think, to my number one top tip. So all previous Hero X pages or prize pages are still live. You can go to those previous prize pages and review the public facing materials that, um, previous applicants submitted as a part of their application. So you can go to the round seven Hero X page, see uh, Rejul's videos that they submitted and get a sense of what does success look like? Um, what, did, what work did they do that contributed to them being a Jedi winner, to them being a uh, round seven grand prize winner? I think that that's the best advice I can give you if you're trying to figure out, am I eligible? Uh, is this something that I want to do? What, um, what can I expect to get out of that program? The teams that were previously successful can do a far better job than I ever could in demonstrating what that looks like. So learn from them. 
And finally, leverage support networks. We as power connectors are here to support you every step along the way. I know my colleague Colin is going to share some links in the chat for future um, office hours that we'll be hosting. So those are opportunities that you can kind of sign into and engage with us as a power connector and ask any questions that you have. And I'll also be hosting um, one-on-one -on -one sessions for teams that are actively working on an application and would benefit from one-on-one -on -one support in um, putting together their application, but also connecting with connectors or other power connectors. So I think um, that's, a, that's a good next step and opportunity to continue to connect you know, after the webinar. Let's see, I, I see a few things coming through the chat. That is, uh, I know Colin shared the office hours. Thanks for doing that. That's a good way to engage with Colin. Um, previous rounds, yes. Um, I thought uh, Ashley's actually, if she's still on here, if you want to come say hi uh, from in color. And then the other day we were talking, Sarah, and I think something interesting you mentioned in reviewing, you know, helping review these applications for a number of years for a lot of teams. And we can see that when a team has like that Jedi as part of their core strategy, they have more partners, they have more like local partners of where this thing's going to be implemented first or where my test is. And you can just kind of see it. You know, it's like a thousand things across the whole application of kind of where it strengthens it, whether or not they win the Jedi prize. Uh, that's something that I think you've talked about a few times kind of behind the scenes that I wanted to, to bring to the group. And then uh, Ashley, if you want to say hi, introduce yourself. Sorry. No, no problem. Thank you for giving me the space. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Uh, my name is Ashley Arhan. I'm a part of the In Color team. Um, my colleague and I, uh, Rachel Dorton, um, we are leading the Jedi um, Prize. So if we're hoping folks will opt in, as Sarah mentioned, I um, think it's super important that folks are thinking about those intersectionalities and how we can also include marginalized communities as we're thinking about commercializing products. So we're here to support, offer that one-on-one -on -one, um, support. This is our first year as a power connector. So I'm thankful to venture well and also learning so much from them, but we're also here to support you all um, if you do choose to opt into the Jedi contest. And I would add that Jedi is optional now, um, but I don't, I think there's so much potential and other funding opportunities where JEDI won't be optional in the future. So I think participation in JEDI now in a safe space where you can experiment and fail quickly and easily, like what a wonderful opportunity to, to do so with the support of a power connector like in color. And, you know, Colin mentioned the potential for partnerships and the Jedi competition. I'm thinking back to reviewing um, Rejewel's round seven Go application. I think they had two full pages of partnerships that they identified in their application um, that helped propel them forward as, as a grand prize winner and as a Jedi winner. So that's just like a snapshot of the value of participating in Jedi. Um, we still have about 25 minutes left. I am happy to answer any questions that you all might have about eligibility, about the prize structure um, itself. Um, you know, the, the floor is yours. Hi, um, I was wondering what you don't have a team for individual members. Yeah, Mark, I cannot understand you. I don't know if you have, maybe you could type your, a question in the chat or if you could get a uh, Let me try again. Uh, um, what if you're an individual member, uh, you don't have a team? Do you have a team? Yeah, um, individuals are eligible to apply, um, but I would encourage you to, grow your team to especially um, 
a big part of the application is talking about your team, why your team is the, the team to bring this innovation to market, um, and also how your team is going to engage in future rounds of the solar prize. It'd be very hard to do that as an individual. Um, I think there's just so much work that's going to be done in future rounds that it's it's not feasible to expect that an individual could do that on their own. So, okay for now, but I encourage you to consider, you know, finding some teammates in the future. And the ready contest period is a long one. You know, I mentioned that applications aren't due until September 26. So there's plenty of time to work on building a team um, in, in that period. Your questions. How many of you all, Erin uh, has one, sorry. This is, um, I just discovered this last week and jumped in on this info session. Um, and I'm going to bring this back to my team today. Um, so I'm just getting oriented. Um, I want to make sure I'm getting all the emails and everything, but I don't even have the, I don't know where to get the rule book and everything. So um, is there... Yeah, I'm if there's an intro, in, an introductory email that I missed, or Colin can cover um, emails and make okay. sure that you're set up to get those. I'm going to share my screen of the uh, Hero X page so that you know what that looks like, and I'm also going to pull up the rule book so you have a vision for that. All right. And we don't have to take up a bunch of time with this, but just wanted to. Oh, no, it's fine, because I think this is important to cover. So this is what the um, Hero X challenge page looks like. It provides a summary of the challenge and what you can expect. Um, and there are multiple pages. The timeline is especially important. It's going to detail all of the opportunities to engage in the prize, whether it's uh, deadlines for the competition or um, you know other webinars that you can attend um, and opportunities for engagement. Okay. Updates can be found, um, but the Teams page that I mentioned, this is gonna be available on each um, prize round page. And I would encourage you to, to peruse those to see um, what has been submitted previously, but this is where you're going to find all of the challenge resources, um, the guidelines, a template for your submission, and um, the rule book as well. And this is what that rule book looks like. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll scroll right down to ready. So here's where the ready contest is introduced and the, um, the process of applying the submission and evaluation criteria. And this is what I, I mentioned previously about the suggested content that you provide. So what you'd be reviewed on as a, as an applicant and what, how you're being evaluated on that criteria. Um, they are very clear about what they want. So mm -hmm. following this to a T is really what's going to set you up for success. Okay. And how do we get in contact with you for one-on-ones? Will that be also in an email? Colin, how has that been set up? Will that be in follow-up emails? Uh -uh. Yeah, so uh, the calendar for Sarah will go out to anyone who's engaged with us directly. So you all will get that. We could share that in the chat even right now, but uh, you'll get that in the follow-up email as well. 
And then we can dig into like specific questions you might have, um, review the application itself. However, that, that time together might be the most useful. Any other questions? I would just uh, add to the question on the team. Um, it doesn't have to be like someone's, you know, vested on a contract in your company. It could be advisors, partners, really thinking of that broadly. I think in general for startups, but especially for the solar prize, um, it doesn't mean you have like five W2 employees, but you're, you're getting the people kind of in your group that you're going to need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thinking about previously successful teams, I think oftentimes there there's two like key team members. Um, I think what I see most often is one person that has strong technical expertise and one person that has strong um, business expertise and really propels like the um, kind of commercialization of the innovation. So I would I would encourage you to consider maybe someone who has a different bringing on someone who has a different skill set than you or can has complementary skills and expertise to to yours. And we're going to send out I believe a recording of this session as well as the the presentation deck. Uh, so that you can peruse that after the fact and, and get comfortable with some of the, the content I deliver today. But I'll continue to, to be here as a resource for you, whether that's through emails or scheduling someone on one time to connect. Um, I would also encourage you to connect with Ashley. She's going to be able to provide some really great Jedi resources and opportunities for you to expand on your your Jedi application. I could not be a bigger like proponent of applying for the Jedi competition. I really think that it strengthens your your application in so many ways. All right. And Ashley's email is the power connector email. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. If you wouldn't mind using that email that way, if I happen to be out of office or whatever, someone else from my team can respond to you promptly. Yeah, so to Diane's question about team members in the chat, you know, team members are a variety of different things. They don't necessarily have to be someone that you pay as an employee, but it could be, you know, an intern, um, an advisor, a mentor, um, or someone who is working on this for equity in your company with you. At this at this earlier stage, things are a little bit more fluid for teams, so we recognize that. I uh, you can probably speak to this more, Sarah, but I think one thing that came up with uh, the Jedi work of, of Rejul, and it's kind of inherent to their mission, but. Not very long after the grand grand prize round six, they they also were awarded a, like a very large contract from DOE to basically put this into practice in a specific community. Um, to me, it seemed like a straight line, you know, kind of like you know they 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 have the model to prove it in with the specific community. They have those partnerships, uh, and it was a totally separate team and review and process and everything. But it just kind of the momentum they built with that seemed to to lead into that. I don't know if you can speak to that at all, but. Yeah, I would say that for many, uh, engaging in Solar Prize or engaging in the American Main Challenge Network is an entryway into federal funding opportunities, especially through the Department of Energy. Um, so I, I believe for Regal, this was the first time they'd receive federal funding, but it also like opens them up to additional opportunities. So I think that that looks a, differently for every team. You know, it could be just getting familiar with the process of applying for federal grants so that 
you know, this may look like a, a big extensive application, but it's about what you can expect when you're applying for other federal uh, prizes or grants. So it's good to get into um, to that process and familiarize yourself with that. Um, but then like through the challenge network um, and by familiarizing yourself with other people that work in the Department of Energy, more opportunities become available for you, like what happened for Regal. I think, you know, they won Solar Prize and then a few weeks later, they received that $6 million award from the Department of Transportation that built on the work that they started during Solar Prize. We still have a few more minutes together. You feel free to to leave if you've gotten everything you needed from our time together. Um, but I'd be happy to to stick around and answer any other questions that you might have. Um, but this this is just info session one of many, um, and we can, are happy to continue to engage as we progress throughout the competition. I'm curious how many of you on the call plan to apply or have started. Kelsey has, Aaron's thinking about it. I'm trying to decide um, actually which company to apply with, which team. Um, so it depends on who's who's in. Um, yeah. And you can submit more than one application. That's another thing. I, um, I didn't cover it today, but it is something that is detailed in the appendix. Um, let me pull it up just so I can give you the most accurate information. Let's see. And I don't know if they applied for different tech in the same rounds, but Sarah's definitely worked with NC Solar Inverters and they had different tech they brought the next year and did well, you know, once you get the hang of it. Right. Yeah. So the Actually, same team participated in subsequent rounds of the competition, but each round they had a slightly different idea that they were working on. Let's see. I haven't found the specific page for the multiple applications. Yeah, I, I saw it yesterday. I think it's up to three, and I can't find it right now either. It's a long rule book. You all, you all have probably seen this by now. Yes, it is a long rule book. But that, and that's something we could talk about in a one on one session too. Um, yeah. Do you, I actually do have another question. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to have proof of interest for purchase purchasing your idea? I don't know how I don't have the language for that. In this yeah, moment. so not in this round. In yeah. um the go contest period, if you progress to that point, you okay. do need to have signed contracts by the end of the contest period. But during the ready contest, you know, it's really just about introducing your team. Oh, and I, I found it. You can have up to three submissions, um, different submissions. Um, let's see. So for the ready contest period, it's really just about identifying that problem solution fit um, that okay. you there are potential customers you haven't engaged them yet, um, but over the set contest period, you know we're really going to engage in customer discovery and um, kind of hone in on who exactly those early adapters might be, um, and who might sign a contract for a future contest period. Okay. Yeah, ready is really about the plan proving that you're ready for future contest periods. And if you keep coming to my um, webinars, there there's more potential for future puns.
Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you everyone for attending and you know, keep in contact. Don't hesitate to reach out with questions, but it was wonderful to, to meet with you and engage today. All right, great. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, bye everyone.